I don't deserve your forgiveness. I lied to you, I stole from you, and everything that's happening right now is because of me. Hey guys, I'm Lexi. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Miraculous Ladybug is a series that thrives from a large cast of characters. This fictional version of Paris comes to life with many exciting residents with unique desires and motivations. Some of these characters come from equally interesting backgrounds, and their personal histories make them the perfect candidates for a spin-off series. In today's video, we're exploring some of these characters and what a story about them could be. What happened? You were able to access the power of the dragon? I had some help. 10. Zo. Fans of Miraculous Ladybug were surprised to learn that Chloe has a half-sister. Zoe doesn't join the series until season 4 in the episode, Soul Crusher. She is much different than her sister and mother as she maintains a more genuine and kind personality towards others. She pretends to behave poorly around her family because that is the only way they accept her. Zoe's late appearance in the series occurs because she was living in New York with her mother where she attended a boarding school. A spin-off series detailing her life before her move to Paris could be a great way to explore the complex nature of the bourgeois family. It could also tell more about Zoe's struggles, as she finds it hard to remain true to herself amongst her overbearing family. They all said I was a loser. Maybe they were right. I get that I'm different. And I'd understand if you guys didn't want me as a friend. 9. Plague a portion of Miraculous Ladybug's revolving cast are the Kwamis, but these mystical creatures still have a big part to play in the story. Plague is a Kwame with more screen time than most, and he appears to have led an intriguing life before meeting Adrian. Plague is not only centuries old with a long history of previous wielders, but Master Few implies he's responsible for many historically significant events. Kwamis aren't supposed to use their powers without a wielder because they are unpredictable and dangerous. In the episode Style Queen, Master Few protests Plague using his powers due to his disastrous actions, like the sinking of Atlantis and the destruction of the dinosaurs. A series that follows Plague's adventures throughout history could show these events, their consequences, and how he overcomes them. Meow, style faux pas. Cataclysm! <laughs> 8. Suhan Suhan is a celestial guardian of the Miracle Box, now protected by Marinette. He was one of the victims of the Senti monster created by Master Fu in his youth, and he spent centuries trapped inside the Sentai monster with his fellow guardians. The pair defeats the Guardian by using modern technology against him and is a precedent for a potential spin-off. Suhan spent centuries trapped in time, and he and the rest of his order must learn how to live in the modern world, find holders for the other miracle boxes, and assess new threats. Challenging me like this is akin to pulling on the tiger's whiskers, you villain! Whoa, easy there! Calm down, it's just a movie, see? 7. Fayou a Miraculous Ladybug has expanded recently, as the franchise now introduces new characters from other places in their world. One of these characters is Fei Yu, a main character in the Miraculous Shanghai special. Fei isn't a character who's had an easy life. She is left on the doorstep of Wu Shifu's martial arts school as a baby, and then raised by him to become the next guardian of the prodigious. After the death of Shifu, Fei meets Marinette, and then helps Ladybug and Cat Noir stop Hawk Moth from obtaining the prodigious. Afterward, she takes over as the guardian of the magical pendant and uses its power to become an animal shape-shifting hero called Lady Dragon. A series featuring Fei could follow her as she learns more about the prodigious and protects Shanghai from danger. Red with black spots? 6. Jess Another character introduced in a special is Jessica Kane's otherwise called Jess. She helps Ladybug and Cat Noir when Hawk Moth releases akumatized villains in New York. She is also the partner of the American superhero Night Owl. She begins the miraculous New York special as the sidekick known as Sparrow, but eventually comes into possession of the Eagle Miraculous. Ladybug helps Jess to keep the miraculous, believing that it is in good hands, and she uses it to become the hero known as Eagle. A spin-off surrounding her story could tell about her growth into an independent hero, her relationship with the superhero team United Heroes, and any miraculous that remain in New York City. Little Sparrow was ready to become a fierce eagle. Little Sparrow was ready to become a fearsome eagle. Uh, thank you, Mom! Uh, uh, I mean, thank you, sir. 5. Alex is an interesting character because she maintains the rabbit miraculous full-time. Her abilities allow her to burrow within time and space where she watches the past, present, and future. She appears throughout the series when she notices an alternate timeline forming, and she helps Ladybug and Cat Noir defeat various threats. Alex acquires the rabbit miraculous in the episode Evolution. She then learns to hide letters in historical objects for her father to find, so she can tell him about her adventures. This implies that she spends time exploring history 
and her spin-off series could explore her maintaining the timeline while meeting, helping, or protecting prominent historical figures. The most dangerous one, too. As you know, changing the past can have serious consequences on the present. Red with black spots? Strange pattern for a Chinese face. This isn't a Chinese vase. It's the solution to our problem. Four, Joanne Dark. This is a great deal of untold history regarding the previous miraculous wielders. They occasionally are shown in a series, yet very little is known about them. A recurring wielder is Joanne Dark, who wielded the Ladybug Miraculous during the Hundred Years' War. In the episode reunion, Marinette can connect with her using her Quagatama, and the two can communicate freely. Joanne reveals her personal history to Marinette, including her role during the war. She also established a relationship with the wielder of the cat, Miraculous from her time, even though they were on opposing sides. This would be a compelling premise for a spin-off series, as it could show how Joanne obtained her Miraculous, her wartime efforts, and her relationship with other Miraculous holders in her time. Then both we gave up our Miraculous, not to be seen again. And then he lived happily ever after? I hope so, Marinette. I hope so. Phoenix is a particular character who is neither good nor bad. Although he took on an antagonistic role at the beginning of the series, you he do remains everything neutral in the battle you between the heroes and Hawk Moth. Felix only acts to further his own agenda, but so far, the fans of Miraculous Ladybug have no idea what that agenda is. At best, he's the series' resident anti-hero, and a spin-off about his life and motivations could be enlightening. In the episode Felix, a few crucial details about Felix's life are revealed, such as his living in England and the recent death of his father. These two things could influence Felix's character, and a series detailing the hardships in his life could make him all the more compelling within the main series. But I promise you, I will get the Miraculous before he does. I won't let him recreate a world in the image of his madness. 2. Natalie Natalie has been at Gabriel's side since the beginning of the series. She is a capable and loyal partner who plays a role in any success that Hawk Moth gains. In the episode Passion, she is revealed to have secret tapes of Emily. She is close to Emily and Gabriel and reminisces about their past together. According to the flashbacks, they explored together and made archaeological discoveries. But I promise you, I will get the miraculous before he does. I won't let him recreate a world in the image of his madness. Senti monster! A magical creature conjured from an emotion shaped by the power of the peacock! 1. Master Fu Master Fu has led a long and harsh life and he reveals some of his backstory in the episode, Feast. After being trained from a young age to become a guardian of the Miracle Box, he creates a senti monster to bring him food when his training requires him to fast. The Sente monster devours everything and everyone in his temple instead, and Few narrowly escapes with the main Miracle Box featured throughout the series. Few dedicates his life to protecting the Miracle Box and even sacrifices personal relationships to ensure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. A series could go into more detail about the decades of dedicated service he put in as a guardian. The most dangerous one, too. As you know, changing the past can have serious consequences on the present. His challenges and his journey to find the next capable miraculous wielders these characters are some of the most complex and compelling in the series. There is plenty of story for them left to tell, but the main plot in Miraculous Ladybug doesn't leave room for extending storytelling or exposition on their behalf. A spin-off series, comics, or web shorts could be what these characters need to develop and reach their full potential. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated on our uploads divorced or somebody ends up passing away they now have to decide to take care of their finances in the worst time possible so better for you to plan for your finances when it's within your control and now when you're forced into it next fact that we know about uh, women is that women tend to take more time off work right so we typically tend to be the ones who um, raises children or ends up taking care of a loved one and so we end up taking time off work and that affects not only our income for today, but potentially our income for the future. Um, think about social security, right? Social security is based on your top earnings, your top uh, eight quarters of earnings. And so if you've taken time off work and you, you know, in your lifetime have made less than your significant other, your social security will tend to be less than your partner. You also have had less time to invest in your 401k, right? So when it comes to having assets, you'll now have less assets because you've decided to take time off work, which isn't bad, right? You've taken time off work to maybe raise some children or take care of a aging parent. And now that has impacted you, okay? Um, and that just adds to the fact that 
as women or as women of color, we make significantly less than our counterparts, whether they're men or white women, right? So we make less. So finances should be something that's really important to us to take care of because it will impact us over the long period of time. Did you know that 49% uh, of women today rely on their social security income alone? That means 49% of women have no other streams of income, no alimony, no pensions that have been left behind by their husbands, but solely on social security. So for, the, for you young folks out there, is it realistic to even consider social security income as an income for you?